Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you've joined us from today. Now, my name is George, and I've been working as a digital marketing consultant here at Sitecore for the past five years. I'm going to be your moderator for today, and as such, I'd like to welcome everyone to this webinar, which is part of our Sitecore Commerce webinar series. Now, before we go any further, let's go over some housekeeping rules just to make sure that you'll enjoy the best possible experience during this webinar. Now, all attendees are on mute. This is simply so we don't all talk through each other. However, if you have any questions, please use the chat panel to your left to ask us anything, and we will attempt to answer it at the end. Now, keep in mind that we've reserved only a 10-minute time slot for questions, so if we can't get to yours on time, you can always contact us by email. Furthermore, this webinar is also being recorded, and you'll be able to watch it on demand whenever you want. The slides are also provided for you in PDF format in the bonus resources window to your left. Now, a little bit about Sitecore. Now, Sitecore provides the only integrated experience management platform combining content, data, and commerce in one. Now, with a leading web content management system and commerce platform at its core, Sitecore empowers you to market in context. If you'd like to know more about us, simply visit us at Sitecore.com. Anyway, today we have two presenters with us, Mark Floyson and Phil Haywood. Mark is CMO at Caveo. He has over 20 years of marketing, sales, and general management experience in the technology industry, spanning blue chip and started out companies across three continents, including Apple, Adobe, Business Object, SAP, Total Defense, and more. Mark was most recently with Sitecore, a Caveo technology partner, where he led product marketing. Now, joining Mark is Phil Haywood, who is creative director at RedWeb. In his role as creative director, Phil works closely with client project teams and stakeholders in all user-focused aspects, including strategic planning, marketing, communications, and user interface and visual design. Now, today the guys will be talking about enhancing your e-commerce experience with machine learning. Now, Mark, Phil, I'm very excited to have you both with us here today. So without further ado, please take it away. Thanks very much. Uh, really appreciate it, George. Uh, so really, what are we going to cover? I guess the, you can summarize it as how to focus on incre increasing conversions and basically driving more revenue by applying machine learning in an e-commerce setting. And, and we'll break that into a couple of different topics. First and foremost, we'll look at why personalization of the commerce experience actually even matters. Uh, obviously, from a consumer point of view, we probably know this intuitively, but let's just spell it out. Um, and then perhaps what to utilize. There's no shortage of data, uh, how to take advantage of it, and, and you know, what, what to utilize. Really understanding a little bit more about where machine learning helps and, and where it can kind of help with the heavy lifting of improving uh, the merchandising capabilities. We're actually then going to look at a specific customer example, which will be presented by Phil from RedWeb, uh, and then wrap it up with uh, kind of what machine learning therefore enables and how Caveo can help you do that. Probably a good place to start is this quote from Penny Gillespie, who's an analyst at Gartner Research. Uh, digital personalization engines used for commerce are technology solutions that integrate digital commerce platforms or alternative technologies that make continuous real-time changes, continuous real-time changes for an individual based on digital interaction and make presentation layer changes for the specific individual. What does that mean? It means that at any point that someone is in your online shopping experience, that all the data you have at your disposal is being put to work to optimize what is being presented to them in that moment. And not to anyone or not to you know, a homogenous segment of arbitrarily you know, uh, named people, but to them based on their unique data. And, and you know, that's aspirational for a lot of organizations. Uh, however, when you start to see how Caveo and Sitecore combine to bring this to life, you realize that uh, this is actually, it should be the norm. And so what Gartner has identified here is a category of focusing on utilizing technology to fundamentally improve the personalization associated with the shopping experience. What do they do? Well, you know, a key thing is that these personalization engines, when applied into commerce, fundamentally drive profit. Uh, you have things like higher average order values, greater conversion rates, uh, increased revenue, lower costs, and fundamentally reduced cart abandonment. Again, this comes from uh, the Gartner Delight Customers and Drive Revenue with Digital Personalization Report. 
And, you know, some examples were quoted which they uh, re uh, redacted the uh, vendor names from, so I, I can't disclose those because I don't have them. Uh, but these, these are Gartner examples where, you know, a retailer, for example, saw 40% more clicks on product recommendations, which drove a 28-point lift in revenue. They also saw an 11% increase in average order value. You know, this is, this is gold dust for online retailers. Uh, in a B2B services environment, the, that B2B services provider saw a 71% increase in conversion rates through more targeted upselling of, of offers to the folks that are in, in its uh, procurement uh, cycle. And then being able to also eliminate costs that were associated with support uh, through, uh, or basically save money through eliminating those support costs on the back end of those transactions. And then in the manufacturing environment, you know, an 18% improvement in engagement with shopping modules on the home page and a 5% drop in cart abandonment. You know, the scale that some of these organizations operate at, you know, saving a quarter point here and a half a point there, uh, a whole point or five points, you know, this adds up very, very quickly. Uh, I used to run an e-commerce business some years ago and, you know, would drill my team that, you know, make a half percent change here or a quarter percent improvement there, and, and you're layering down something that continues to give. It's like compound interest. So making these incremental improvements throughout the shopping process last a very, very long time. Um, so, so what of that? Well, if we think of how Gartner identifies where to personalize, they, they, they group it into a couple of different buckets, color-coded here. You know, on the if I start from the right, uh, there are the various channels that someone might engage with you through. So whether that's actually on, you know, in store, uh, whether it's uh, via email, whether it's social, you know, what are the communication channels that you can choose to personalize? And of course, the Sitecore Experience platform personalizes all of those channels uh, as, as part of its offering. What are the product affiliations, though? So, you know, can you identify uh, that people have got certain preferences uh, or that there are dependencies on certain products that, you know, if you buy this, then you need to buy that because it doesn't work without that? And so how do you make sure that you're re merchandising and recommending based on the kind of product affiliations that are associated with it? Clearly, location is an important factor of this. Where in the world is someone? Uh, if if I'm in you know the northern territories of Australia and it's the dry season, uh, you know merchandise sunshades to me rather than uh, merchandising uh, you know wet weather gear. Uh, and equally, if I'm in you know Tasmania in Australia, then the reciprocal might be true. So depending where you are in the world, clearly you know weather. Uh, geolocation, nearest store, all of those are opportunities to deliver a more personalized experience in that shopping process. And then clearly behavior. Behavior about you know, what uh, all customers do. So how can you start drawing inference from the sum total of all of the interactions that everyone has had with your store and use those to start making some predictions of what might be valuable for other people? This is, in essence, where the machine learning stuff comes into play. You know, equally, certain similar customers, can you start automatically grouping segments of people together that exhibit some sort of cohort behavior and use their, um, their behaviors, their preferences, what worked for them, and indeed what didn't, as the basis for automatically recommending to other similar birds of a feather? And then that individual customer, what is the behavior they've exhibited in you know, their own click streams, uh, maybe their own prior visits if they're a returning customer, perhaps even you know, uh, what else you've seen them do in that, in that very session that can help inform what you might recommend to them. If they've come from a certain area on your site, clearly it might make sense to uh, overweight the merchandising of products from that area and, and underweight some that are not from that. And then, of course, all of the knowledge that you've probably already got about your customers, their preferences, whether those have been expressly stated or implicit. You know, if they've already acquired certain brands, you may choose to have profiled them to be, for example, a certain type of shopper. 
Uh, if I exhibit a behavior that shows that I've tended to buy premium brands, you might profile me as a, you know, a premium customer perhaps, and therefore merchandise things that are appropriate to me. No, and, and indeed, from a, from a promotional standpoint, maybe try and motivate me to buy things not based on discounting, because if I'm a premium customer, I might not need a discount. But perhaps something more exclusive that uh, you know people that bought this also got access to a new release product uh, that is in limited supply and uh, only available to a select few. So the preferences that your customers provide you can provide a huge uh, uh, array of capabilities against which to personalize as well. Their demographics, you know, obviously, you know, the more you know about them, uh, you're going to be able to classify them based on age appropriateness of product, uh, even down to things like, um, you know, in the extreme cases, I happen to live in California, you can't buy wine online under 21, you know, so age is an important factor depending on what the nature of the merchandise is. Uh, what are their personal interests? Uh, you know, who who else have they involved with? Um, can you perhaps uh, infer based on their behavior that they may be a you know a family and therefore more interested in a saloon car than you know uh, a young single upwardly mobile professional who might be more interested in a, a snazzy sports utility vehicle to get away for the weekend? And then, of course, the transaction data. You have an immense amount of in, uh, interest and information in what they've already bought from you. What have they looked at? What did they spend? What kind of service do they expect of you? Are they a profitable customer for you? And indeed, being able to therefore glean needs and wants. And of course, all of this along the way uh, under, uh, underpinned by the kind of preferences that can be put in a, in a commerce platform itself, things like you know, where do they ship to, what are the payment methods, all of these things provide an opportunity to personalize. So there are lots of, lots of rich pickings against which to go and, and deliver some of this personalization capability. But there are some must-have commerce features, and this according to, to Forrester Research, who, who I, I, and I break this into broad categories for the sake of simplicity. Uh, on the one hand, they talk about the ability to have very strong navigational experiences, especially where you have a large product catalog with a lot of stock keeping units. Uh, how do you ensure that that's easily searchable? You know, 80% of shoppers, according to Forrester, know what it is that they want when they arrive at a store. Help them get to it quicker. Uh, and indeed, supplement that with features that encourage discovery things that enable them to drill deeper and find out more about the product that they're about to purchase in. Ancillary documentation that may help them in their selection. Uh, product usage videos that show, for example, how easy it is to put up something like a tent, which is a notorious product to buy online because you know they're often unfathomable when you try and open them up on a cold, rainy day. So other features that encourage discovery about the product that enable it to easily be brought to life for the customer are really important in, in terms of improving the conversion rate. Powerful product detail pages. You know, the, the, the observation from Forrester is the, the more the merrier. You can never have too much detail on a product detail page. And this may sound counterintuitive. Uh, you know, there are folks that may think that might appear cluttered. The reality of it is that someone shopping online has chosen to do so and has foregone the opportunity to actually touch and smell that product in store and engage with a salesperson live. Their expectation is that they shouldn't have to because there is enough information presented to them in the shopping experience to make their decision. So you can't fully anticipate absolutely every source of information they may choose to need to look at. So why not have it all accessible to them and present it to them in a way that's easy and visual and that they can effectively find their way through? And then, you know, nuts and bolts, fast checkout ensures retailers close the deal. No surprise. Uh, where you have complex checkout flows, uh, where you have complex payment types, all of those are barriers and, 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 and drive up abandonment rates. Uh, you know, equally, ensuring that it's very straightforward as people flow through that purchase piece. In other words, it's not just about the merchandising. You know, it's fine to have someone select. You still got to get them to check out of the cart. So, so how to harness some of the machine learning? Well, you know, clearly in terms of the the the, the personalization, 
there's an awful lot that uh, can be delivered automatically. And all of these examples are actually uh, borrowed from our good friends at Amazon, again, courtesy of Forrester's research piece in terms of must-have commerce features. Uh, and this was a, a research document that was done last year uh, for the retail e-commerce playbook by them. What you see in it is a couple of interesting things, and these are all obviously select examples. But you know, the ability, for example, to merchandise things that were frequently bought together. You know, how do you start cross-promoting things that you've observed that other customers frequently add in when they sell? Uh, sponsored products that are related to that item. You know, sometimes you're going to want to promote something either because uh, you have a specific offer on it or indeed uh, you know, you've solicited vendor um, co-promotion money to, to have them have their product featured in, in the cross-sell spaces. Uh, and you know, some of those things can be done automatically. Some of them can be done by rules. Uh, one of the things that you want to be able to do is merchandise things that you know sell well. And so how to ensure that you know, you're effectively promoting products that are related to that item uh, that, that will be proven winners for you. Uh, insight into what customers who previously bought it also bought. So you know, making those recommendations that say customers like you also did this. Uh, customers that uh, viewed this may be interested in those. All of these kind of uh, merchandising capabilities have proven themselves over time. And you know, let's be honest, Amazon seems to have done okay with it. Uh, they've proven themselves over time to be highly valuable merchandising capabilities. And, and these can be driven utilizing machine learning capability that predictively anticipates what they're likely to need next. The data from it comes from several different places. Some of it is obviously that which is you know, looking at what they're browsing in their catalogs, uh, what's actually added to cart, clearly the purchase history of that customer as well as those purchase um, uh, histories of other customers like them. You know, your experience database, pro database profiles inside of the Sitecore Experience platform are of course a, a, a rich treasure trove of, of customer-specific information. The click streams, the, if you like, the journeys and, and data analytics of what people have been looking at, all of that data is fed into the machine learning capability to deliver these automated recommendations. So rather than talking about theory and, and what the research says, um, at this point I'm, I'm going to hand over to Phil who's going to talk us through a, a real example uh, and uh, conducted by, by RedWeb themselves. So Phil, over to you. Thanks, Mark. Um, as George said, I'm a creative director at RedWeb. We're a full-service digital agency, which is one of the largest and longest-running independent digital agencies in the UK. In fact, we're proud to have just celebrated our 20th anniversary. Uh, we've been developing on the Sitecore platform for about 10 years now, and we're a long-standing uh, Sitecore Gold partner. Also, we've been a, Co a Coveo partner for the last four years with a number of successful implementations, including the one that I'm going to talk to you about today. We can't disclose the name of the client that I'm going to talk about today due to its commercially sensitive nature, but we've worked with them for the last um, 12 months. Uh, this particular client is one of the UK's largest suppliers of vitamins and supplements, which up until now has primarily been a mail order company. Their audience fell into older demographics, typically having uh, pre-existing ailments such as joint pain, hence glucosamine is one of their top selling products. However, mail order is declining and their customer base was, to be frank, dying off uh, with a few new younger people making up the difference. Uh, they were already on site core, but only had very traditional e-commerce features and they weren't really taking advantage of the power of the platform. Also, due to their cautious approach to the UK's Advertising Standards Agency's guidelines for um, making claims about the effectiveness of certain products, they kept their consumer advice content on an entirely separate site, which um, obviously provided um, SEO problems and also just how, how do you sell the products that you're trying to sell. 
key to their goal of becoming a major online retailer was their desire to grow their market by targeting younger consumers who were interested in living generally healthy lifestyles and aren't just interested in the uh, prevention and alleviation of ailments. As part of this move towards becoming a health and wellness brand, they introduced new ranges of protein powders and personalized vitamins tailored to individual needs and lifestyles, along with advice about how to live a generally healthier, happier life. So they're looking not just to be uh, pushing their products, but also to be promoting other ways to live a healthier life. And this strategy relied on the ability to provide a tailored combination of advice and products to provide a uh, compelling and engaging purchasing experience. Caveo complements the Sitecore platform because it tightly integrates and combines a powerful search product with flexible components, which reduces time to market and also gives flexibility for content edit content editors to make their own changes without developer intervention. For example, we were able to quickly add a faceted search facility which can be modified over time as products change and lessons are learned. Our goal was to provide a user experience that, while powerful, remained familiar to reduce frustration and abandonment. Caveo provided this for us, but we were also able to take it beyond search by using it to power our product category pages. This approach has the advantage of allowing us to enhance what would otherwise be static listings with personalization to adjust the results based on match personas. Search is great, but to make the most of it, you need to understand how people are using it. Caveo comes with powerful analytics functionality that captures what people query, how they filter and refine their search results, and which results they click. Using cloud analytics, we can quickly see which queries have low relevance or no results, which allows us to easily tune and improve those searches. This can be combined with Caveo's um, site-wide package tracking to, uh, sorry, page tracking to provide additional context that we can use to make search results more relevant. Also, we can create multiple search pipelines with different rules, and we can run A-B tests to determine which have the best outcomes. So, where does machine learning come in? As I previously mentioned, we were able to take Caveo beyond search by using it to put relevant information at people's fingertips. Caveo Machine Learning sits alongside Caveo Usage Analytics to create a self-learning search service which constantly analyzes behavior patterns to understand which results and content lead to best outcomes. So uh, Caveo for Sitecore currently supports machine learning in three different ways. Firstly, uh, tuning results based on user context for business needs. Uh, Secondly, query suggestions to streamline the experience and reduce error. And thirdly, recommendation engines to provide helpful suggestions and nudge towards purchase. So let's look at an example of query suggestions. Using machine learning, Caveo can look at the query being typed and suggest options based on previously successful outcomes. So if a number of people enter the same kind of query, and click through on the results they receive, Caveo learns this query, marks it as successful, and starts to suggest it back to people. As a result, queries become more tolerant to typos, especially for commonly misspelled terms like, in our case, glucosamine. Also, machine learning provides better rankings, so suggestions become more relevant. Automatic relevance tuning works by capturing data in analytics about which results are most successful for a search. Caveo Machine Learning then adjusts future search results so the best performing content or product appear nearer the top. For our client, this was a big shift away from them and dictating the order of search results, but they had to learn trust that the search would adapt and that the results would gradually become more relevant. For example, a branded pregnancy multivitamin product initially had poor relevancy when people were searching for folic acid. However, it quickly adjusted to appear towards the top of the search results as Caveo identified it as a product people were clicking through 
on uh, given that search term. It's worth pointing out that these adjustments can be manually overridden with explicit top results or boosting. In this instance, our clients had premium products that they wanted to be promoted. The final aspect of machine learning in Kaveo is recommendations. Relevant recommendations is a powerful tool in helping people choose and purchase products. Kaveo provides recommendations by learning from recorded navigation history such as search activities and page views. Based on previous journeys taken by people through the site, it can learn what content relates to particular contexts. So we configured Kaveo to exploit this in a couple of ways. One was to surface Amazon-style pods recommending products relating to the current content, and also to show suggestions of articles people have read that are related to the current product. So uh, a few statistics. Since launching the site in August this year, we've uh, achieved a 27% increase in average session duration, a 14% increase in organic revenue and transactions, and a 16% increase in conversion rates. We've also seen people spending more time on the site reading the lifestyle and advice content. And as an outcome of this, they're purchasing more products. So in summary, Kaveo is our go-to option for site core search. It provides powerful search functionality and makes site content more relevant for end users. People are also used to behavior on sites like Amazon, so we feel that Kaveo becomes a perfect fit for e-commerce sites. Not only can it power your search listings, but with machine learning, it adds relevancy and recommendations. It's your data scientist in the cloud. But it's also important to understand how it works and what it takes in order to trust in the results it produces. As it takes data for the machine learning to provide value to listings, we found that it's important to warm the, model, the models up before go live. Alternatively, you can launch with recommendations switched off until a critical mass of user data has been gathered. We also found that testers skewed the system as they were often browsing the same pages and search for the same products, so a clear down before launch is important. Uh, so really, in summary, everybody was really pleased with the results of this project. It was great to develop with, um, and it's something that we see a lot of uh, scope for and potential in for, for future projects, and, and we're already planning on on working with Kaveo uh, going into the near future. Back to Mark. Excellent. Phil, thank you very much. Uh, great insight into, into your customer there, and obviously the results speak for themselves. So, so l let me try in a couple of minutes to uh, articulate really where Kaveo can, can, can help uh, and where, if you like, the machine learning shows up. You know, I think you saw in some of Phil's examples things like the intelligent query su su suggestions, being able to make better suggestions for people when they, when they do that autocomplete. Uh, looking at, obviously, the intelligent search results themselves, ensuring that the most salient content is uh, surfacing to the top over time based on, again, analyzing the data. Uh, looking at the recommendations that are put in place and, and putting, uh, if you like, auto-merchandising content next to, uh, or merchandising products next to content without needing to do that in a manual fashion. Uh, and then, the, of course, the ability to even build into your own applications the ability to search in and ultimately support things like what happens post-purchase in terms of case deflection, giving people access to content both pre- and post-shopping as well. Uh, the, I guess the, the, you know, if you think of what that looks like in terms of the recommendations piece, uh, a lot of the uh, feedback we hear from customers is you know, keeping my merchandising up to speed and current requires a small army of people managing a spreadsheet the size of Texas and needing to then put recommendation requests into my IT team that can take two to four weeks to implement. And, and that just isn't nimble. Uh, it doesn't scale, and it gets in the way of optimizing that real estate. And so by having the machine learning automate additional product recommendations based on all the kind of things we saw earlier, uh, Kaveo integrated into Sitecore Commerce enables us to do things like, you know, very quickly automate recommendations. And this is actually on a demo, uh, the Habitat Sitecore demo model. 
Uh, this actually is a, a live example of how that content can effectively be used to auto recommend products that are appropriate to what's being browsed at the moment. So the uh, the gist of it is that from a commerce standpoint, uh, the it looks like there's some problem in the sound. No, it's all fixed. Uh, if it's from a commerce standpoint, it, the uh, ability to auto merchandise in Sitecore Commerce uh, using Caveo is now kind of pretty much out the box. It's that integration has been done and and, and runs deep. Uh, the other aspect of this is to think about. Uh, how it manifests itself in leveraging that experience database uh, content. So if, for example, we think of, and, and this is, a, again, a demonstration example showing some content about the site core user interface. And you'll see over here on the right that there's content recommendations that have been made based on looking under the hood, the fact that the pattern of behavior exhibited in this browsing session has triggered uh, personalization rules inside Sitecore to say that this audience segment looks to be a developer uh, and the sort of information type that they like is high level. And so the content recommendation based on the Sitecore personalization uh, or persona categorization has been to say, let's put up some developer recommendations. This is automated. This is not manual. It doesn't require rules and so on. The flip side of that, if we look at another example, would be these recommendations are different. It's the same page, the same content. However, in this case, the segment that's been triggered, the profile that's been triggered in Sitecore is as a content owner. And so the change of content that's recommended for those owners is apparent uh, under here as well. So all of this can be applied, whether it's in the browsing phase, in the run-up to purchase, or in the commerce actual transaction process itself. This recommendation based on harmonizing with the uh, triggered persona in the Sitecore Experience database uh, runs really deep. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there is a very detailed slide here, which I call the Read Me at Home slide, but really just goes into a lot more depth about some of the features, some of which we've covered, uh, and, and a bit more detail as to how some of this stuff gets done. I'm not going to go through it on the course of this uh, webinar. Uh, suffice to say, a whole lot of advanced search, navigation, and merchandising capability uh, summarized uh, below. Clearly, the machine learning capability that is effectively about optimizing and personalizing throughout that journey, and the ability to effectively ingest external content and behavioral data, bring that into the site core shopping experience so that all of that ancillary content that people may want to look at, such as videos and so on, can be delivered inside the shopping experience, as well as behavioral data that can be brought into bear on what's likely to be of use uh, and therefore relevant to other shoppers like those folks as well. And I've got one brief plug, and that plug is that uh, there is actually a, a customer conference in uh, San Francisco in June. So folks that are interested in more about Caveo and Sitecore, clearly feel free to come along for that. Uh, and obviously, for any further information, you can, of course, contact us directly, info at caveo.com. Uh, hopefully, that's given you an overview of how uh, Sitecore and Caveo in partnership can improve the uh, conversion process and drive up average order value. You saw the example from our partners, RedWeb, of how they've put that into practice in their customer. Uh, and I guess at this point, George, I'll hand back to you to see if there are uh, any questions have come through. That's right. Um, thanks a lot, Mark and Phil, for this. Um, in my opinion, really great insights into the added value of not just using search and commerce, but really pairing Caveo search with Sitecore itself to really improve the customer experience. Um, we did have some questions coming in, so guys, feel free to jump in however you see fit uh, to answer them. Um, our first question was, um, why Caveo over standard Sitecore search, actually? Uh, yeah, yeah should I take that, that one? Um, oh, yeah, yeah we're far away. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we always consider all our options when we um, choose what technology we're going to use. But we felt that with an e-commerce solution, um, having having something that could um, really uh, provide enhanced search results 
will will drive more conversion, i.e., I. more more purchases. Uh, you know, when you're looking for a particular product, the quality of the search results and the information that you're given is 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 absolutely paramount. So, what we wanted was was something that had the ability to to learn, to adapt, to be able to use data um, and context to be able to provide to provide more personalized results. Another um, important part of us was, was like just the control over the search pipeline, the user interface, and also to a degree speed to market. So having these, um, these advanced features out of the box, just it's all added up into, um, into a proposition that, that, that we were able to um, put to our customer and they were very happy to um, to take us up on so um so so it was really that that whole package of of what would create the best e-commerce um, uh, experience for our customers okay thanks for yeah, that and I would add to that, George, just with this with the, with this with a slight bias yeah. obviously given that I've got the Caveo badge on but you know, the fact is that Caveo has invested very heavily in uh, building a, a product that integrates directly into Sitecore. And so for Sitecore administrators, the ability to you know, administer Caveo from inside Sitecore as part of the, you know, the Sitecore experience uh, is a lot more seamless. You know, to, to Phil's point, that integration runs very deep. And the ease with which, therefore, out of the box, you can bring this other content into Sitecore for the purpose of presentation just makes the, the, the speed of uh, delivering a project so much quicker and then the ongoing running of it so much easier. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. I um, hope that was clear. Um, our next question is, how can you see machine learning improving things even further in the future? Um, yeah, so I, I'll, I'll have a crack at that one. Um, so okay. in terms of where else we go, so think of there is the opportunity to bring additional data to bear, uh, not just from what has been gleaned, but you know if you have got additional data about, for example, customer product usage, that extraneous data can be fed into machine learning routines as well to start to make predictions. Uh, it, this actually, I guess, speaks a little bit to Phil's point about warming up uh, models beforehand. You're able to ingest data and historical data, things like you know customer usage patterns, customer installation patterns, and, and use that as the basis for further recommending uh, right off the bat what might be helpful to a new customer for whom you just don't have much prehistory. Phil, you want to add? Yeah, um, I mean, my my main thing, you know, as a as a designer at heart and and and, and somebody who who designs user interfaces, you know, we, we we're always trying to get to a situation where where the where the interface between you know humans and computers is is more human, and trying to make make that relationship more like a conversation so that everything just feels much more natural and 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 I'm convinced that sort of machine learning is is the path to that future where where you know there is that give and take that that data exchange which enhances the value of 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 the information that is provided that's based on you know people's circumstances their user behavior and also the behavior of 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 their peers their cohort that all combine in a way that maybe we as humans take us take take for granted to to enhance that experience to make it you know uh, more human and I guess more delightful and I think it's 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 that delight that you know when we're talking about e-commerce um, really helps sell help products um, that's 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 really my kind of take on. That's my spin on where I see machine learning going and, 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 and what it's really for. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, guys. I think that really covers uh, machine learning pretty well. And, and actually, uh, in the meantime, while we were talking about this, there's another question uh, that came in relevant to this. And it's asking, what is the biggest benefit of machine learning when talking purely e-commerce? Mm. Well, I think... Um, 
what what we found was was the biggest benefit is is enabling the uh, the recommendations to be much more relevant to be able to look at your own click streams to compare it to um, the the experience of, of of people in your cohort to to provide information that's that's help, that's genuinely helpful when you're talking about things like um, you know vitamins and supplements there's a lot of things to to think about there's there's not only you know what um, what these particular products are good for but also how helpful are they how do people find that that they work what turns out to be popular um, when you're buying online you you perhaps have have relatively little to go on other than the um, rather than the uh, information that the that the website provides to you but with machine learning being able to to look at the the behavior of of you know perhaps thousands or even millions of people um, and being able to match context with products being able to say well in this particular situation we think this person has this particular type of joint pain and and that they're this particular age and this is their particular lifestyle that similar people have not only bought this particular product or maybe this handful of products but then they've also rated it highly as well they've left good reviews and if we can pre present that information to people as, as, as saying you know people in your situation have found that this product works for them that's a very powerful um, uh, selling mechanism um, and without machine learning that becomes a lot more static you're suddenly you know you're you're kind of back to where um, perhaps uh, the people who are looking after the website the company is 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 in charge of making those recommend those recommendations and perhaps the trust isn't quite there as much as it would be knowing that um, that the other people have found this useful not just it isn't just a sort a sort of like corporate promotion so that's you know that that combining of context and content and product information um, and being able to use all of those to make recommendations and to give you uh, related products and take you off to related articles about what else you can do to perhaps alleviate your condition or or, or that sort of thing has been really powerful for, for, for this customer that we that I was uh, talking about earlier okay fantastic um, I'm gonna hijack the questions for a bit and ask you guys a question myself then um, who do you see benefiting more from uh, when it comes to search and machine learning uh, in the future? Is it B two C or more B two B customers? Yeah, I'll I'll take that one. Um, so I think George, the the thing there is that we're all consumers, and we're all consumers whether we're buying you know for ourselves and our household, uh, or we're bringing that same behavior to the workplace and you know selecting a vendor for a, I don't know a component in a in a manufacturing plant. Uh, our expectations of consumers have, have risen sharply over the last 10, 15 years. And so there's this disconnect of what we as consumers have come to expect and what we, ha we get stuck with as B2B buyers. And I don't think that that is sustainable. I think what we're seeing is the brands that are servicing the business-to-business -business customer are reacting to that and realizing they need to up their game because people are people and they, they, they're looking for the same rich shopping experience in their day job as they do you know, at, at home when they're, when they're looking for a new pair of running shoes. So that idea of ensuring there's a consistency that is born from harnessing the data, optimizing the experience, personalizing the recommendations for the situation of that buyer, whether they are a consumer buying for home or an individual buying for work, that same base need is there. Yep, fantastic. Okay, thanks a lot, um, Mark, for that. And uh, thanks a lot to both of you for, uh, for being on this call and taking the time uh, out of your day to do this webinar for us. Um, I, for one, found it really insightful. 
Um, and I would also like to thank the audience for being so involved today and, and very alive with the questions uh, and for your time for joining us today. Um, that's all that we. That's all the time that we have for today. So if you want to keep in touch with Caveo, um, feel free to contact them at info at caveo.com. And uh, I'd like to wish everybody a nice, a nice day further. Thank you very much. Thank you.